Welcome to Controller's Corner. I'm your host, Pat Curry, joined as always by Buffalo Controller Mark Schroeder. Our top story today, the Controller has introduced a major overhaul of the city's debt management policy, the first time it's been changed in nearly 20 years. The municipal bond market and the city's finances has changed significantly since the 1990s, and this new policy is designed to adapt to those changes while still meeting the city's capital needs. Now, Mark, you looked to a lot of different places for guidance on this policy. Uh, the rating agencies, the big three, Moody's, Standard & Poor, Fitch, the GFOA, as it's yep. known, the Governor's yep. Government Finance Officers Association, your own municipal financial advisor, uh, the city's external auditors, the Office of the State Controller. Basically, you took all the guidelines and guidance and regulations that they have, and you took that information and made a major comprehensive update to this debt management policy, and you think that this will be able to shape the Buffalo's capital needs uh, for the for the uh, upcoming future? Yeah, no, no doubt about it. So this was something that's been on my mind for some time. Um, now, I've been the Buffalo City Controller for the last seven years, and certainly there has been a debt policy. Uh, but over the first you know, seven years or so, there would be just some minor updates that would take place. But um, in my mind, I knew we really had to do a, an initiative here. And so I went to my first deputy, Ann Forty Sherino, who is outstanding, a great technician. And I went to our debt management officer, who's also a deputy controller, Greg Szymanski. Uh, you know, some time ago and told them that this is very important, but this isn't something you're going to be able Able to do in a couple of weeks. Uh, this has taken uh, a couple of years because, based on what you said, Patrick, um, we wanted to go to all sorts of, sort of re reliable sources, uh, and we did for their expertise. Because, as you also indicated, uh, there have been some major changes. Uh, federal, state, local, uh, when we want to make sure that we capture all of that. Uh, and so we took our time, uh, we worked on this, uh, and then the most important thing, I believe, is that we did not ram this or jam this down anybody's throat. Uh, we took our time on it. We asked for uh, certain opinions and expertise. Uh, and then before, I could have just submitted it. Uh, to the city clerk, and it could have been then sent to the mayor and sent to the common council. But we did not do it that way. Um, we asked for input. We brought in members of the mayor's administration. Uh, we, we brought members of the common council in. We even went to the control board and said, do you have any opinions on this? Now is the time, and we want to hear you, and then we will uh, adapt, adapt it, uh, amend it in any way that we, we feel we should. And that's exactly uh, what we did. So this is a quality product. Uh, it's something that we're proud of, but as you also pointed out, uh, this is a document. This debt policy is a document now for the future. Now, you mentioned you sent it to the mayor for his opinion, the Common Council, even the Buffalo Fiscal Stability Authority, and you also sent it to the Citizens Planning Council. Uh, this is the group yep. uh, that sits down and decides um, which are the priorities, uh, capital projects, yep. are priorities for the city, and there's always a lot of discussion on the debt limit and how the controller comes up with that, and the debt policy is is what governs uh, the amount of the maximum amount of money the city can borrow each year. So you sent this to all of the organizations that might have an opinion on, you know, how much the city should borrow in a given year yep. and how we decide uh, how the policy really decides uh, what that limit is and how much we should borrow. So this was a prime opportunity for those groups who are always asking, well, the rates are doing this, we should borrow more, or um, this project needs to get done, we should borrow for that. This is a, a perfect opportunity for them to chime in, and yeah. you asked for that input, and you did receive feedback from some of these groups um, with changes, and you changed yeah. your policy to adapt to those yeah, requests. Yeah, no, no, no question about it. And that, that, that has been, you know, if you look at our mission statement, um, our mission statement, the, one of the key words within it is transparency. So, you know, rather than 
do a major initiative like this and just spring it on them, uh, we decided to do the work. We did all the base work on this. We did all of the work on this, but then we opened it up for a discussion. And where relevant, we listened and then we made those changes. Um, and I think there's a certain respect uh, that all of those different organizations, especially those who are within the mayor's world, I think they respected the way that we did this and that we gave them an opportunity uh, to give us the input. And uh, so it's important. But there's, there's also certain things, Patrick, that are common sense things. Like within the debt policy, it was never really written clearly um, that you really shouldn't be, I really shouldn't be going to the bond market for them to do demos and for them to do tree, right. you know, tree trimmings. Tree trimmings and demolitions of abandoned properties. These are things that the city uh, incurs expenses for every single year. Yeah. So if it's something that's uh, not a capital project, you know, capital yeah. project yeah. is the city's building something, right. a road, a bridge, right. a building. These are something that the city does every year. That will be like using a credit card to pay your utility Yeah, bills. but I understand that. Over the years, there have been certain things that administrations, I saw it when I was in the New York State Assembly with governors, uh, but this was, this gave me and gave us in audit and control a real opportunity to say, listen, for things that should come out of the, the operational budget, do it that way, because I'm not going through the bond market. It's on page 14 of debt policy. Um, the, the, there are certain things that, that are real best practices, and then there are certain things that you do just for your own comfort. We're not going to do that anymore. Now, you mentioned that you know this policy sets forth guidelines and how we're not going to use uh, capital project uh, proceeds for routine maintenance or tree trimming or demos yeah. um, and that it should be for these big projects, capital projects. Uh, that's something that you've been saying for years. But another thing captured in this policy is something you also have been saying uh, for years is you know, things like the new uh, project products out there like bond anticipation notes. Yeah. Uh, this policy, you've utilized that yep. in previous years. This policy really sets forth how we handle those bond an anticipation notes and how we could use them uh, to to better uh, meet the city's needs uh, while possibly saving some money on some interest in interest expenses that the city yeah. might incur, uh, especially with these projects that aren't ready to go. Yeah, so you just, you just hit on something that I think is very, very important. When you send the bond anticipation note, it's commonly called a ban. And as you pointed out, we've used it before. Um, and so going forward, this is another tool that I may be using shortly because because of Buffalo's fiscal year, you know, that ends at the end of June, mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense to me and to my first deputy and others in, on my management team for us to go to the bond market, you know, like in March, April. It would make more sense down the road for us to go like maybe in January. So by having a clear policy and debt policy about bans, mm -hmm. uh, bond anticipation notes, um, in the future, if we decide that we want to try to go to the bond market like in January, then what we could do is we could use a ban, which is clear in the mm -hmm. debt policy book, uh, in terms of how we would go about doing it. Now, the way we would do this is the way we do all things, transparency. We would communicate. We would talk to the administration. Uh, I'm certain that the Department of Public Works and a lot of the different commissioners would be most interested in changing when we go to the bond market because there would be more clarity in terms of what their needs are and because it's, it's problematic for us sometimes. Um, if I don't have empirical evidence that this money is going to be spent um, within a certain period of time, mostly guided by the IRS, then I'm not going to the market for it. So I am willing to adapt this um, so that it makes more sense for the administration in terms of them figuring out what, you know, what projects they need. And in earlier in the year, earlier in the cycle, you go to the bond market, say if you do go in January instead of 
April, it, it puts those funds in place sooner for the construction season. So once that weather breaks, um, those absolutely uh, those heavy equipment can get out there yeah. and uh, hit the hit the ground running. Common sense, common sense things. But I I want to be guided by policies. Um, and I don't want to be getting into, you know, a uh, discussion or an argument uh, with really anybody within, within City Hall. I want to do this by the book. I want to make sure everybody understands. And I want them especially to know that there are advantages by us doing it the way we're doing it, best practices always. And if everybody else uh, does that, we're all, we're all going to you know, be able to help the citizens of Buffalo a lot better. Now, I mentioned in the beginning of the show, this not only has the municipal bond uh, industry changed a lot, yeah. uh, there's a lot of new products out there available. There's a lot of new regulations uh, because of um, certain things that have occurred over the past two decades. Yeah. Uh, but also the city's finances are in a different place than they were in the 1990s. Um, you know, at that point, we were close to junk bond status, and there was a lot of yep. trouble that resulted in the control board. But on the other hand, the city's not... It's not all uh, sunshine and rainbows for the no. city's finances. No. Uh, in fact, you know, for the past several years, all three rating agencies has consistently said every single year that our debt is just too high, and uh, we need to do a, a, we need to continue our policy to reduce the city's debt burden, while also noting that this past year. And we can get into this later when we talk about the gap report. The city used $35 million in reserves yeah. just to fill a budget hole. And money's getting a little tight. And it's, it's, we're not in as good shape financially as we were perhaps maybe three or four years ago. So this policy um, will, will help us also not to reduce our debt. Not only to reduce our debt, which the rating which we have done, which we've done uh, over 100 million since you've yep. been controller, yep. uh, but also it, it would all help us, you know, maximize the the city's borrowing so that we're not spending money on unnecessary interest income yeah. when really money's tight and we need to be spending money on actual projects and, and boots on the ground and, yeah. and actual construction rather than paying some bank interest income because some project wasn't ready or uh, there's other unnecessary reasons for paying this income which you interest interest expenses which you've been saying for years the city's got to improve yeah. on that so over the last seven years uh, we have done a very good job in terms of that debt ratio and it's been recognized recognized uh, by the rating agencies, but yet, as you pointed out, they do say there's still too much debt out there. So sometimes when the council members or some, some of the citizens on the uh, citizens uh, group, uh, they, you know, they want us to borrow more, uh, you know, because the interest rates are down or they're up or they're this or they're that, but they don't understand sometimes the whole picture. It's my it's responsibility. And it's my management team to understand it. But then we try very hard to try to explain it to all of those who need to know. Uh, and that, that's what we've been doing, uh, you know, over the last seven years. That's what we've been doing in particular over the last two years when we put together um, this comprehensive um, from A to Z debt policy. It has everything in there uh, and that we're very, very proud of it. And I'm most proud of the way we presented it uh, to everybody to so that they would have an opportunity uh, to give input. Now, it incorporates ratios that the big three rating agencies actually use to evaluate the city's creditworthiness. And we have to take a brief break, but when I get back, I want to talk more about the credit rating agencies and their impact on the city's bond market. Perfect. Stay tuned for more Comptroller's Corner after this message. Hey, mister, studied algebra in school and got a better job than I could. You take the last call. Oh, no, 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 mister, stuck in an entry-level job because you only learned basic math. I don't have a boss riding my butt like you do, so you take it so you can get back to your desk. <laughs> you know, I probably should, but maybe Miss AP Calculus with the $200 haircut in the big office upstairs would like a cup. Oh, no, mister, what was your name again? Never mind, it doesn't matter. I'm too busy doing important things to care. I just came down for some sweet and stir. <laughs> You know, if my limited math abilities weren't keeping me from getting a better job, I'd quit this afternoon. I don't blame you. But thank goodness you're stuck here because we really need someone to make the coffee. <laughs>
welcome back to Comptroller's Corner. Every year, the Comptroller goes to the bond market to borrow money for the city's capital needs. Before he goes to the bond market, he meets with all three of the big credit rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, and Fitch, and they give the city a grade on its credit worthiness. Now, oftentimes when something occurs, the credit rating agencies want to talk to the controller in between these yearly calls. And that just happened recently when the rating agencies found out that the city used $35 million in reserves to fill a budget hole. Now, Mark, all three rating agencies have been in contact with you, Moody, Standard & Poor's, right. Fitch. Yep. You've uh, done some conference calls with them. In fact, Fitch issued a report where uh, they said that the city's rating would stay the same, but they do have major concerns right. about the use of reserves, yep. the structurally imbalanced budget, and revenues that are just flat and not raising. So. Yeah. You are concerned about that as well. Yeah. You've brought that up um, to the council and to the mayor for, for many years uh, because it's a long-time concern for these rating agencies. And you're trying to stay ahead of with, with, with the rating agencies, um, but also you need to make sure that this problem is addressed yeah. and that the city has a more structurally balanced budget. So, so you said it perfectly. I, I try to stay ahead of the rating agencies. It's my responsibility uh, to understand and that I don't want them at any time to be blindsided. I don't want them at any time to feel like something's happening here in Buffalo and there's no explanation about it. Uh, and so this is something that we did a couple of years ago too when I knew that the school district uh, was close in agreeing to a major contract with the teachers. Even though I don't really have a standing in that negotiation, I rang the bell. I called the rating agencies. I said, you will have a conference call. I'll bring in the chief uh, fiscal officer of the Buffalo Public Schools. Let's have a conversation. I don't want you to be having half truth or not really knowing what's happening here. Let's have a half an hour phone call. Let's talk about everything. That's exactly what we did recently. You know, I knew last year uh, that the mayor had budgeted uh, $12 million for fund balance, but I also knew early on that it was much more than that. And we anticipated that it would be $30 million or more. We had it right, right from the beginning. Uh, and so I knew that at some point in time, we have to have a conversation uh, with the rating agencies so that they understand, so that they can do their due diligence. And at the end, they did their due diligence. And although I know they're concerned, the highest rating that we ever earned in Buffalo history was in November of 2016 by Fitch, double A minus, and we've, we've been able to keep that rating. Why? I believe because transparency. We, we talked about the issues. It's not easy. Uh, municipal work is not easy. Most of the cities in the state of New York have ratings uh, that are not even near buffaloes uh, and so and they've been downgraded time after time after time uh, so it's it's hard and but we work I work very aggressively um, with the administration with the school district and then when I when we understand the full picture then it's my responsibility to communicate it uh, to the rating agencies and then it's their responsibility to give us uh, our mark what, what's our mark on the report card? And you have it right there. It's double A minus uh, with outlook of stable. Uh, that maintained what the city previously had. But I just want to mention some of these things they point out. Quote, further material draws on general fund reserves could pressure the current rating. A trend of slow revenue growth could have a negative impact on the current rating. Fitch expects expenditure growth to increase above the slow revenue growth absent policy action. So yeah. it sounds a lot what you, you like you've been saying for the past few years. Yeah. And, and it's time now yeah. for the policy action that Fitch mentioned. I can remember back in November of 2016 when I called the mayor and told him that we earned the upgrade. And I recall him saying to me, he wanted me to kind of give him some bulletin points uh, to how we get upgrades. And I, and I said, Mayor, in all due respect, before I explain that, let me explain to you how we get downgraded. 
And what you're talking about and what they're talking about, um, you know, when, when, when a trend, a trend is not a good thing in their eyes. A trend means that we're using too much of fund balance every year to balance the budget. That's not a positive, that's a negative. Uh, and so right now we're, we're on notice, right? And you know, there, there's a scary word when you're a controller, there's a scary word, it's called surveillance. And when the rating agencies do a surveillance, that means they want to know what they want to know now because they're concerned about certain things that they're seeing. Uh, and, and so, um, mission accomplished. We, we, we communicated, we, we've done two of the three rating agencies. The third, we will talk with within the next 10 days and then we'll let our viewers know, you know how that went. Uh, and, but the goal always uh, is to maintain or to get a higher rating uh, for our city and then we'll continue you know, to do the best we can. So we mentioned how Fitch is very concerned about these general fund balance draws. Yeah. Uh, which leads me to the latest GAP report, which was uh, just submitted to the council by the administration. Now, you'll uh, provide a formal written response to the council as per your charter requirement. Yep. But the GAP report is much different than the one that was issued three months ago, where they thought they'd be around a million dollars uh, to the good. Um, this one is showing that they're looking at, in their eyes, a uh, $20 million fund balance draw. But we know better. Just to, just to get through, just to get through uh, this current fiscal year that we're yeah. in, that ends in June 30th. Now, now you said last May that uh, the fiscal year that we're in right now uh, could have a fund balance draw of $30 million or more. Yep. Um, you're sticking with that oh, prediction yeah. right now. Yeah. And, and actually, the, the administration's prediction has got coming a lot closer to your prediction back in May. And you think by the time... Uh, all is said and done at the end of fiscal year, we could need another $30 million yeah. for fund balance, and, and that would be a major hit to yeah. our reserves. So, so these gap reports, it's a good thing, um, and we have to do it. And so the Commissioner of Finance will write a gap report, and then we always respond. At the end of the first quarter in September, at the end of even the first half in December, it really doesn't indicate or show really which way the year is going. Now we anticipate, as you, as you mentioned, uh, but now the third quarter gap is now coming to a close and we have to respond and we know. And as we get closer to writing our response to the mayor's budget, we capture all of this in here. And we, I articulate this to the rating agencies and I encourage the administration always uh, to if you know something, you tell them. So when we had these phone conversations last week, you know, when the administration always is invited by me, so a person who sits on the mayor's cabinet, the finance commissioner, she sits in. And I always say to her, please, d don't read the script on the gap report. Tell them where we are real time because that's going to be closer to $30 million than anything else. And, and we don't want to get in a situation where, we're, where they feel we're wasting their time on these phone calls. You tell the truth, you say it right away. And if things begin to change a little bit in our favor, we'll pick up the phone and tell them. And you're hoping that you know, the, the GAP report uh, acknowledges some of the challenges and some of the fund balance draws and s more realistic approach than we've seen previously. You're hoping that approach continues to when the mayor's budget comes out in May so we don't have these fuzzy numbers, so, so to speak, where yeah. you know the city says they're going to get $8 million in real estate sales and yeah. really they only get $1 million. Um, and you know, despite you know whatever uh, the parking commissioner might say to the media about all oh, that money is yeah. just delayed, still hasn't come in that extra seven million dollars. Uh, so you hope th this realistic approach that was taken to the second quarter gap sheets continues to the May release of the yeah. uh, mayor's budget, and you wouldn't have those unrealistic revenues. Yeah. So m most people who've known me for a number of years, they know when I was a member of the assembly, I was never afraid. <laughs> Um, as the Buffalo City Controller, I am not afraid. And so I went and I saw the mayor recently and I explained to him, Mayor, I've been the controller for nearly seven years. I have to now look at the cash flow of our city every week because the fund balance 
has dwindled down to almost nothing. And so we have to communicate here. And if we don't communicate, then we're going to have liquidity problems, which is then going to force us to have other problems. Remember when there was a control board and when they were making every single decision that an elected official should make, whether it's the controller, whether it's the nine council members, or whether it's the mayor. There was a period of time in our history where a nebulous bunch of people who nobody knows and nobody ever voted for, they were making every single decision. We have a responsibility uh, as elected officials to do our best, uh, and we need to communicate with each other, and we need to communicate with the rating agencies so everybody's clear on the picture for the citizens of Buffalo. And there's a possibility that the control board could come back. They actually are still in existence. Uh, they cost the city about a million dollars a year. Uh, and if the certain criteria are met, they could come back uh, yeah. and oversee the city's yeah. finance in a hard control board status. Yeah, yeah. There are four was. things in the uh, enabling legislation. Um, I know it. A, B, C, and D, and I can tell you what they all are. If Buffalo is unable to do those four requirements, then the hard control board comes back in. And so these are the types of conversations uh, that I have you know, with the mayor. These are the kinds of conversations that I have with the rating agencies. These are the kind of conversations, Patrick, that you have uh, with the Common Council uh, when, when you go to the finance meetings and try to explain to them everything that's happening. Uh, and, we, and we try to give them the whole look uh, so that they have opportunities to, to respond if necessary. Mark, we only got a minute or so left. Uh, March is upon us, and that is what you like to call St. Patrick's Month because of all yeah. the uh, related yeah. Irish activities. Uh, Across the by. city of Buffalo, and it's just tremendous. But you know what, Patrick, because we're early on in this year, in 2018, I want to thank our viewers. I want to thank the citizens uh, because I will tell you, I know they're watching us. Um, when I'm out and I go to all these events all year long, people tell me how they watch the controller's corner and how they appreciate the information that we get give to them. And so I want to thank all of the viewers, and I hope I, I see all of you during St. Patrick's Month, starting uh, next week with the Shamrock Run, and then Buffalo, of course, doesn't have one St. Patrick's Day Parade. We have two. Uh, and then there's all sorts of other events, and then the Polish take over, and then the Italians take over with Dingus Day and St. Joseph's Day, uh, and there's so many different ethnic uh, opportunities uh, that we have across the city of Buffalo, so we're, we're really looking forward to it. Well, Mark, thanks for joining us, and thanks at home for joining us on Comptroller's Corner. Make sure to check out the Comptroller's website, the city's Facebook page, our YouTube handle, and our Twitter handle. On behalf of Comptroller Mark Schroeder, this is Pat Curry, signing off.